Today's Spotlight is brought to you in part by presenting sponsor, Busey Bank. Busey, your dream, our promise. Welcome to Spotlight. I'm your host, Jay Mournette. Today I'm joined by three local nonprofits, Fox Valley SCORE, Fox Valley Special Recreation Association, and Citizens Appreciate Public Safety, or CAPS. You're watching Spotlight, and joining me now representing Fox Valley SCORE are Larry Busso and Michelle Marco. Welcome to the show. Thank Good you. to have you both with us. And I, Larry, I'm going to start right out with you. What is SCORE? Well, SCORE is a volunteer organization that was started, uh, you know, as a cooperative partnership program with the SBA in 1964. And the idea is that uh, we provide uh, mentoring services and event program, educational programs uh, to any client that wants to uh, have those type of services. Uh, we've got about 100 members within our chapter in 64 different expertise areas. So when a client comes to us, they're able to find somebody that's been there, done that, that they can relate to, and the educational services that we would provide on top of that. That's awesome. It's kind of like a little, you know, inside consulting firm. Lots of areas of expertise, it, it right? It really is. You know, it really is. As a matter of fact, there are several people that are still working in their own business and, you know, are consultants and so forth. So all of us have been pretty fortunate in our life, and it's our time to give back to society and the community. I love that. I love that. Well, Michelle, you've been a school volunteer, so tell me what attracted you. It's an opportunity um, once you go into retirement or if you're at the end of your phase of, of your career, to be able to give back to others and to pass it on generationally. So I am just um, always ignited with enthusiasm to say that people who are in ideation, just starting up, having an idea, to be able to give them that confidence, renewed confidence to know that they can do it and that we have the support pieces at no charge to them to be able to help them get on to that next phase, whether it's writing the business plan, starting it, or actually growing and acquiring another company. So um, the continuous learning um, for me personally, and then the growth of the individual. Yeah, I think that's lovely. And you know, Larry, you mentioned about giving back and then you made the point, which I think is a really important one, which is free services. Mm -hmm. uh, so that really is that opportunity for learning for the business, but also like you said, it's an opportunity to reignite your own passion, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Larry, how does uh, somebody become a member of SCORE? Well, uh, the membership is pretty easy, really. There are basically four different categories of members that we have within the chapter. Uh, one of them being the mentor, in other words, face-to-face -face advising. The second one would be a presenter. So the presenter would be somebody that has a particular expertise, could be a CPA, could be a lawyer, could be, you know, a business owner in manufacturing, whatever it happens to be. And they would be a presenter of a webinar, you know, that's there. Um, the third one would be, you know, a volunteer. Um, someone that would come to us and say, I've got a particular skill, I don't really have the mentoring uh, ability, um, but I'd like to provide some type of service. Um, sometimes we might be a social media person, mm -hmm. you know, those types of things. So there's lots of ways that people can join the group. Application is made very simply. You could go to foxvalley.score.org or you could go to score.org. And on there, there's a button that you would push to become a volunteer. That comes to our chapter. It comes to our volunteer intake coordinator and to myself as chapter chair. We do an interview. Uh, we set that up. Uh, you know, and we talk about what kind of experience that new person would have coming to SCORE and how that could support the services that we offer. Okay. So that's a pretty easy, pretty, it's like a job interview. Well, kind of really, like going back to work. Yes. It's like a job interview. It really is. And that's the whole idea, you know, that people want to give back and they want to be associated with other people that have the like, you know, like skills, but also get involved with mm -hmm. people. When people retire, they lose that, um, you know, that association they've had, you know, with their business life. And we create another association with mentors like us, you know, that are like-minded. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think that's a good point. It's not just about the work. It's also about the social, right? Because work is often 
yes. also about the social and creating that environment. Exactly. Michelle, talk a little bit about some of your events and programs. Uh, the events. I'm so glad you asked because um, <laughs> what we have done is we created um, uh, several different roundtable opportunities in conjunction with Naper Launch. Um, and Naper Launch, for those who don't know, is just a gem of an opportunity that we're fortunate to have here at the Naperville Public Library. Um, our actual physical location is at the Nichols Library, but I do, um, in both Nichols and the 95th Street, a lot of joint efforts with them. So what we have done is created Women's Business Roundtable, where we have a network of women entrepreneurs, again, all phases and stages of business um, uh, growth and opportunity. And then we also do training through the Naper Launch and their Academy. Oh. And that's two, um, two four-part series that we offer there. Um, and that allows people to be able to get not only the licensing of their business establishment, as well as a business plan developed using very um, proven um, techniques and trades that then allows the banker to have the confidence that this particular individual is really trustworthy to be able to go on and start their business or expand their business. Um, I think to, to this opportunity here today in doing the interview is to know that we also have a green room and we have the skills and technology and techniques um, of the support staff with the lot through the library system that partners with SCORE to be able to um, launch um, different YouTube channels for individuals to have their video um, of their program to put on their own website. And I think if there's one other that I would like to be able to address is that the Small Business Owners Committee of the Naperville Area Chamber has also now uh, joined forces with the Naper Launch and SCORE so that we will be doing roundtables and discussion groups and presentations for the small business owners of the city of Naperville. So we're delighted to be able to roll that out next month and have formed a wonderful network of resources to be able, again, to enrich the business owner. Yeah, and I think that's so important, right? I mean, it's 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 knowing who can I talk to? I've got yes. this great idea. Who can I talk to? Creating those little networks for everybody, that's really good. Now, I'm, I'm thinking there are businesses out there right now, Larry, who are thinking, this sounds pretty good to me. So how would they reach out? How would they find a way to get a school mentor for themselves? Well, that, again, it's a really simple process. You know, um, certainly they could go to foxvalley.score.org or they could go to score.org. And what they do is you'll hit a different button this time. Instead <laughs> of being a volunteer, you're looking for advising services. So in doing so, they'll put in their zip code it comes back through the system. We've got four people, one each week during the month, that actually take those intake, uh, you know, requests, and then they go find the appropriate mentor to assign those to. So we get uh, anywhere from 25 to 30 requests a week. Uh, so we're really busy. We've got 100, like I say, people that are able to take those kinds of requests. Um, so th that's basically the way that people in the business community can find us. Okay. Just go to our websites. That's where the information <laughs> is. Okay. And then we'll do a little matchmaking and, uh, you know, business gets booming. That, that's exactly right. And it sounds like it's a wonderful opportunity for those who have already served mm -hmm. uh, in the business world to uh, help you out. So thank you so much for coming. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you for having us. We yeah. look forward to getting and helping out as many more um, people in the business community as we can. Thank you. Absolutely. If you are interested in learning more about Fox Valley Score, please go and visit their website. We're going to take a quick break, but stay tuned. We're coming right back with more Spotlight. For more than 150 years, you've believed in Busey. Today, more than ever, we believe in you. To our healthcare workers, first responders, and local businesses, you're central to the communities we're proud to call home. Busey's grateful to partner with you and your families through life's ups and downs, today and for generations to come. Because as neighbors helping neighbors, we're in this together. Busey, grateful to serve the communities we call home. The Naperville Police Department needs your help to solve crime and bring offenders to justice. When you submit tips to Naperville Crime Stoppers, you help keep our city one of the safest in the nation. Tips to Naperville Crime Stoppers have helped solve hundreds of crimes and recover over $7 million in drugs, property, and cash. Remember, tipsters remain anonymous and receive cash rewards up to $1,000. 
if their tips lead to an arrest. Call the tip line at 630-420-6006. You may have that one piece of information that solves the crime. If you're just tuning in, you're watching Spotlight. I'm your host, Jay Mornette, and joining me now is Alex Engelhardt. She's from the Fox Valley Special Recreation Association. So welcome to the show, Alex. Thanks for having me, Jane. Good to have you with us. And I'm going to just start right out with what is Fox Valley Special Recreation Association? Fox Valley Special Recreation Ex Association is an extension of park districts and departments. And we enhance and engage individuals with disabilities in leisure and recreation activities, from arts and crafts to fitness programs and summer day camps. Anything that you and I would want to do for fun, we try to ensure a barrier-free opportunity for individuals. We have certified therapeutic recreation specialists who design these programs specific to meet their needs, and we are excited to get back into some in-person programming. Yeah, absolutely. It's been too long, hasn't it? It has. Yeah. Now, you said right off the top, working with park districts. Give us a little bit of a sense of which park districts. We are in the Fox Valley region, so we go north to South Elgin and all the way south to Oswego and loop in Sugar Grove, so all up and down the Fox River Valley area. Okay, nice. That's a big swath of geography, it right? It is. Yeah. Now, talk a little bit, because I think it's important. What's one thing you'd like people to know, our viewers to know, about people with disabilities? Our big campaign this year is to not only be aware of individuals with disabilities, of the awareness days and the awareness month, but really be accepting and elevate and be intentional about accepting individuals with disabilities, whether we are doing that through our language, our programming, um, or our policy. So we really want to ensure and challenge everyone here today to be accepting of individuals with disabilities. Nice, I like that, I like that. Now talk a little bit about what gives your team joy because I know you, you you're a very joyful person. What gives you and your team joy throughout the day and the work that you do? We love to celebrate the big victories and the small ones too. Just in this last month, one of our Special Olympic athletes, he competed in the snowshoeing competition at the state Special Olympic event and he got a gold medal, so first place in the 800 meter run and the 600 meter run. The city of Geneva honored him with a day in honor of himself, um, and we really celebrated that victory. That same month, one of our newest athletes, he is on our youth Special Olympic basketball team, he made his very first and only basket of the year. With his basket, that meant everyone on the entire youth basketball team scored in that year, and our team, of staff were so excited with both of those accomplishments. Our programming empowers individuals with disabilities and builds their self-confidence through these big and small victories. Yeah, I think that's so interesting, right? Because victories are rel relative. Uh, and so what seems like maybe not as big of an achievement to one person is a really big achievement to somebody else. And it is celebrating, right, at whatever level. That's correct, yes. Yeah. Tell us a story of the impact that you've had and your team has had on somebody's life. Sure. FESRA provides programming through the entire life cycle of an individual. Uh, I'd like to tell you a story about David. And David has Down syndrome and started with FESRA when he was just three years old. He attended our Camp Little Feathers summer day camp up in St. Charles. And David was able to make friends and do activities that enhanced his education. And we provided evening and weekend programs as well for him to stay engaged and to really complement that education component. As David transitioned to an adult, we expanded our programs and he was able to participate in Special Olympic sports and other health and fitness activities to stay healthy and active. He attends, attends dances and other social clubs to connect and build friendships. And now even as his lifestyle and his family dynamics change at home, FESRA is that constant in his life. He's able to look at us as family, even if his own family is changing. Okay, I mean, that's really a wonderful story because you really, you, you celebrate both uh, and program to both young kids and old, right? I mean, talk a little bit about that breadth of programming, Alex. Correct. Um, the youngest that we've provided programming for was a five month old with Down syndrome and our oldest was 76 years old. Uh, that individual has since retired from Special Olympics. As I know, I, at 76, I won't be uh, competing in Special <laughs> Olympic basketball either. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, that's great. And, and do you find that that kind of creates a family within your family? 
Oh, it truly does. Our uh, families are, we look at them as cohorts and uh, the parents and the caregivers and the siblings even make those friendships right along with the, the individual with disabilities. Okay, and what's new? So what have you got? I mean, I know you've been very busy through the pandemic. I know that's been a very challenging time, uh, but what's new? What's going on for this year? Our team is preparing for large outdoor special events and we are partnering with our park districts. Uh, but we know many families with individuals with special needs, they don't attend these events. Uh, they often can be overwhelming and just overstimulating and families choose not to go. We wanna rewrite that story. We are doing that by an initiative called the Soothe Space. So this space will be large festivals and fairs. Think of a first aid station where an individual can go to if they need medical support, uh, but this Soothe Space concept will be there for emotional and behavioral support. So we want families that would have chosen otherwise not to attend. We want to, again, be accepting of individuals within the community and invite them to these events and know that there is a safe space called the Soothe Space that will be waiting for them when they join us in the community. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, I mean, I think that really is. You're meeting people where their needs are. You're making sure that they don't have to miss out on something. Uh, and gosh, I, I think many of us could use a soothe <laughs> space uh, during some of those festivals. So that's wonderful. What a great initiative. Yes, this uh, space will have sensory equipment, uh, weighted blankets or other fidget type items to help the child or the adult and it's a, a sensory oasis to help them recharge, regroup, and then continue on their way. Oh, I love that. Now, as we're wrapping up, talk a little bit about how the viewers can connect with you, how they can support your mission. We are hiring right now for all of our summer programming, and we have part-time staff positions from Summer Day Camp Counselor and many leadership positions from Site Director or an Inclusive Recreation Assistant. So we hope that you could join our team. We are always looking for volunteers and special guests to join any of our programs. As always, our foundation is looking for financial support and we have many other ways that you can get involved with FESRA. Go ahead and visit our website and we have all of our information there. Wonderful, we'll do a little one-stop shop for you, right? All right. Okay, thank you so much for coming by. Thank you so much, Jane. Absolutely. And to find out more about Fox Valley Special Recreation Association, please go and visit their website. But in the meantime, don't go away. We're coming right back after a few short messages. For more than 150 years, you've believed in Busey. Today, more than ever, we believe in you. To our healthcare workers, first responders, and local businesses, you're central to the communities we're proud to call home. Busey's grateful to partner with you and your families through life's ups and downs, today and for generations to come. Because as neighbors helping neighbors, we're in this together. Busey, grateful to serve the communities we call home. We all have a story to share, stories others can relate to, whether moments of sorrow or of hope and inspiration, whether a story of struggle or a moment of victory. Every little moment captured and shared helps us to feel more informed, helps us to feel more engaged with and connected to the community we all call home. Every little moment captured and shared adds up to something greater. For us, that something is the collective story of Naperville, a city rich in its volunteer spirit, its diversity, its traditions and celebrations, and so much more. In Naperville, there are so many stories worth sharing. And for the past 35 years, it's been our honor to tell those stories and share them with you. Welcome back to Spotlight. Joining me now from Citizens Appreciate Public Safety, or CAPS, are Chief Police Jason Aries and Wes Wernett. Welcome to the show. Hi, Jane. Thank you. Good to have you. Wes, I'm going to start right out with you. What is CAPS? Citizens Appreciate Public Safety, CAPS. It is a Naperville community group that recognizes the outstanding job that the Naperville Police and Fire Departments do for our community. Each year, citizens nominate those individuals who they believe go above and beyond, very much above and beyond, in the care and well-being of Naperville citizens. We have two events each year, one in the fall, usually October, where we recognize the fire department personnel. And then we have one in the spring, 
in May where we recognize those individuals in the police department. Okay. So Chief Aries, what kinds of things do people get nominated for? I think this is my favorite thing about the CAPS event because there are the traditional things, the big criminal cases that we solve, running to someone's rescue, but you hear some really human stories about the other things that police aren't always known for, helping that family get a meal that maybe wouldn't have a meal anywhere else that night, helping a family celebrate Christmas that otherwise wouldn't have one with a police officer. So I think a lot of people come into the event expecting to hear the traditional, we put handcuffs on a suspect and took him to jail and yay, but it really shows the human side of policing too and the great work the men and women of the police department do that are kind of outside the norm of what police are known for. That's that above and beyond, right? Not yep. the call of duty, it's the call of the heart. Yep. Yeah. It's a mix of both. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about how people go about nominating. What's that process look like? Sure. Well, we've tried to work hard at streamlining and making it easy for folks. You can go out to our website, NapervilleCaps.com, and there is a nominate tab. And within that, you can take and fill out an online form. There is uh, two other ways. Also, you can actually, if you prefer, write a letter and or send an email. All the contact information is on the website. Okay. So yes. pretty simple. Pretty Not simple, hard. pretty straightforward. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And then usually about four to six weeks before the event, we pull all those nominations together and then select five to seven winners. Um, and also for each department, there's a special award that is handed out for the police. It is the George Pradle Award that is named after our late great mayor and officer friendly. Mm -hmm. uh, and on the fire department side, it's the George Winkler Award that was named after George, who was a 31 year veteran of the department and was really known for his integrity, dedication, and kindness. Okay. It makes so, for special awards. It makes for a nice evening. Yeah, absolutely. And, and they don't know who's going to receive that, which I, I've been yeah. there in the audience, and it's just lovely to see when the surprise for that. Um, Jason, talk a little bit about, you know, what that means to the police and the staff when they get one of these CAPS awards. I think it's really special. And I think, you know, we as a department do a good job of recognizing the great work the men and women do. But what's really cool about the CAP Award is it's citizens appreciate public safety. So it's that citizen who reaches out. So when they reach out and talk about a, the way a, a police officer helped them or um, assisted them in a time of need, that makes the, the award that much, that much more special to them, that it was a citizen doing it as opposed to where it's just the staff. Yeah, I think that, and, and again, I mean, having been in that audience and seeing the interaction sometimes between those that have nominated and those that are receiving, there's some, some special relationships that happen there, right? There really are. It becomes a very personal thing. I mean, when you're helping, like I said, someone in need or a victim of a crime, we're human beings too, like everyone else is police officers. So there, there becomes an emotional attachment to really helping that person seek justice or assisting that person through a very difficult time in their life. So it, you're, you're right on with that. The emotional connection is right there, which makes that award that much more special when someone takes the time to nominate them for it. Yeah, absolutely. Now, you have some other ways on CAPS, right, to, uh, to recognize uh, first responders, and that's your BRIC program. So tell us a little bit about that, Wes, and how people could get involved with that. Sure. Yeah, a few years ago, we began the Naperville Commemorative BRIC program, um, and it is really set aside to allow individuals or organizations uh, purchase a brick and, to remember a friend or to simply pay tribute to either the police or fire department. We set aside 500 bricks in the public safety plaza, which is located between the police and fire administration buildings on uh, Aurora Avenue. And uh, the bricks cost $250 each. They're tax deductible. And the money, the proceeds are used to directly support our events. Okay, so that's nice. So that's a way that you can, even if maybe you weren't going to the event, you could show your appreciation. And can you do those year round? Absolutely, absolutely year round. And you can go out to our website again, and uh, there is a form on there under the uh, um, BRICS program tab that you can take and fill out an online form, and then there'll be a confirmation that comes through for your order so that you know exactly what's gonna be set on the brick and when approximately it should be delivered. So. Jason, you know, obviously it's great that CAPS does that and, and citizens, again, have this opportunity uh, to show their appreciation for what your department does. Talk a little bit about how that makes your offices and, yours, and your personnel feel. 
I think, again, it's a really cool thing to see a citizen that buys a brick in support of, again, CAPS, and then it's out there. It's a really neat little setup by our memorial wall in front of the PD and in front of the fire department. So when they walk through there, they see these bricks and the support of the community. Some of them are bought for retirees or officers that have passed along. So seeing that memorial to them, and I know the fire department feels the same way. Again, that's just another sign of community support for us, which is always nice to feel. Yeah, that community engagement is important, right? I mean, that's a big part for your department. It is because policing is a tough job at times. So to see and remember that there's a lot of people out there that support you and are behind you, it's great for the men and women to see that. And it shows right there with the bricks in front of the police department, in front of the fire department. Yeah, and it's a very nice area. I think that that's being done very nicely. And I yeah. think you have some Girl Scout troops that also come in and put some flowers and stuff in there, right, in the we, spring. We do. Every spring they come out. It's been the Islamic Center Girl Scouts that have come out the last few years, and they do a fantastic job. And it really does. It adds to it. So again, it just brings that whole community feel into that area, them taking the time to do that, and really makes it look beautiful there. Yeah, absolutely. So Wes, you mentioned off the top that you've got your two events, one in October for the fire, one coming up in May for the police. How does somebody go about getting, getting a ticket if they've already done their nomination? Absolutely. Well, the number one portal is NaperVilleCaps.com. If you go out there, we have information about both events for the year um, at all times so that you can go in, see the location, date, and time on where it's gonna be held. Um, also, while you're online there, you can purchase tickets for the event. Um, we always keep the price at a very uh, a modest amount so that uh, we encourage attendance. And it really is a great way to spend an evening. I, I think people that attend find the stories inspiring. And you don't have to have been involved. I mean, anybody can come, right? It's, so it's open to anyone. Open to everyone. Open to everyone, absolutely. Just like the nomination process is, every single person in Naperville is welcome to nominate and welcome to attend. Okay, wonderful. Well, listen, thank you so much for coming by. Really appreciate mm -hmm. it. Absolutely. Well, thank you for having us. Absolutely. Thanks for having us, Jane. Oh, always good. Always good to see you. And if you want more information about Citizens Appreciate Public Safety or CAPS, please go and visit their website. We're going to take a quick break, but stay tuned. We're coming right back with more Spotlight. I'd like to thank all of my guests for joining us on Spotlight and our friends at Busey Bank for their generous sponsorship of today's show. To find out more about the organizations featured on today's episode, please go and visit our website at nctv17.com. And to stay informed about what's happening in our community, sign up to receive our daily news update and like and follow us on Facebook. For Spotlight, I'm Jay Mournett. Thank you for watching. Today's Spotlight is brought to you in part by presenting sponsor, Busey Bank. Busey, your dream, our promise.